one of the things about West Africa in general, Liberia specifically, is that there are miles and miles of beaches, not something that first springs to mind. Welcome to Liberia with the thunder of the gentle rolling waves in the background. Liberia with an astonishing coastline that's largely empty, probably due to two major civil wars and brutal civil wars through the 1990s and early 2000s. Now, Liberia, colonized by the Americans in the early 1800s, but not just colonized, it was for the redeployment of freed slaves. Hence the name Liberia, Monrovia, after President Monroe, who was president of the United States at the time. And in fact, Liberia was run by American Liber Liberians, which was the ethnic group that formed from the descendants of the West Indian and American freed slaves or born frees that came here. It was the first independent republic in Africa and it was the only country that wasn't gobbled up in the scramble for Africa in the age of colonization, except for the colony of the United States for freed slaves. Now, it might sound all good, as if Liberia had been previously empty. In fact, there were indigenous people here and there's settlements back to the Stone Age. And in a great twist of irony, the freed slaves who founded Liberia didn't get on with the indigenous people and enslaved them. So when you boil it all down, the two major civil wars, brutal as heck in the 1990s, were actually the overthrowing of the American Liberian by the indigenous people. And the civil wars were so brutal that a special court was set up in Sierra Leone and the president here, Charles Taylor, not only was brutal to his own people, had a critical role in the war next door in Sierra Leone which is why Charles Taylor's now in jail. So as the women of Liberia got sick to death of the men starting wars and killing a lot of people, they decided to protest for peace. And women like Lema Gaboi led movements in Liberia to push for peace. And after the peace agreement, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was elected president of Liberia, making her not just the first female leader of Liberia, but the first female head of state in Africa. And since then, we've started to see economic growth begin. We've seen a couple of democratic changes in election. And now you get the sense that maybe things are starting to become a little bit more positive. A lack of investment other than from the Chinese. And no, they're not colonizing them. And no, they're not enslaving them. Yes, they're doing trade deals. But according to most Africans I speak to, the Chinese influence is a heck of a lot better than the European one. That having been said, it is one of the few countries I won't walk far from the hotel at night time. It doesn't happen in many places. It doesn't feel that secure yet. But the other thing you can also find in Liberia, which you do in many parts of Africa and the developing world, is the microplastics problems start often here through the commercialism and the materialism that we create in the West. And whilst I'm very happy to swim on the beach down the coast with the crashing waves, I won't hear outside Monrovia because the sewerage systems pump all the garbage directly into the water. And I'm not sure how healthy it would be to swim in the open ocean just here. So this is General Ruben. He's my guide in the Duco Hotel here where the Queen stayed and where GFK stayed, but I'm going to show you it's not quite in very good condition at the moment, is it? Sure. So the Ducor Hotel is probably a good place to finish and quite symbolic. Once grand, then destroyed, now needing reconstruction. Perhaps there's some hope, and maybe this is a metaphor for Liberia. Let's hope for Liberia.